Karen Pay, let's talk about dividend growers. And you say dividend growers are reasonably priced in the market right now, but you're talking about companies growing their dividends, not high dividend payers like utility stocks or some of the consumer staples, right? That's correct, Greg. Uh, we think it's important for investors to make a distinction between high dividend uh, paying stocks that are perhaps overpaying their, what they're earning, um, and we like dividend growers, companies that have sustainable growth, sustainable cash flow. And these are the types of companies that we think are trading at a very reasonable valuation in this environment where they're uh, cheaper than what they've been trading at historically. And even in a somewhat slow or a soft economy, they're resilient. So that's what is also attractive about them, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, in a slow growth environment, you want companies that can generate good cash flow. You want companies that are uh, that are creating their own sort of growth tra trajectory and that are really uh, able to handle a slowdown in the economy. And not just the U.S. economy, the global economy, because a lot of the dividend growers you're looking at compete globally, correct? That's right. Uh, many of the large uh, global companies have revenues outside of the U.S. They're diversified, and so in that respect, they are um, a little bit more uh, they're less dependent on what's going on in one country uh, in particular. And uh, we actually do have a preference for companies that are a little bit more domestically oriented at this point. Uh, but we, we do think that um, you want to have companies where uh, they're diversified in terms of their revenues for that. Um, for that. And you also like the fact that um, they're to a certain extent a hedge against inflation because we've been seeing some wage inflation uh, it's been creeping up a little bit, and this would, uh, it wouldn't hurt a dividend grower as much, correct? When you have uh, a cash flow coming in, uh, it does provide some inflation hedge. And um, in this market also, when uh, investors are in a low return environment, having some dividends um, and dividend growth will be uh, more resilient to market volatility. So they are a hedge against inflation in the long run and a hedge against market volatility. And then you're seeing a dividend growth right now in the technology and the healthcare spaces. Uh, anywhere else you're finding dividend growth? And where are you, uh, where are you avoiding? Is there, is there any, any problem areas for you out there right now? Uh, when you look at it from a sector standpoint, uh, it does. We, we do find healthcare and technology attractive, uh, but we also f look at uh, look down and look at industries. And so when you look at industries, you have. Uh, for example, cable companies that are cash flow rich. You also have uh, some telecom companies that have um, good cash flow. And we really like business models that are sustainable and predictable in terms of what their um, top line revenue and what their margins look like. So margin expansion is also another area that we think is um, important in this environment. Uh, essentially, uh, in, a, in a low growth environment, you want to be able to find growth wherever um, you, you can and you want some of those defensive characteristics in dividend growth. All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming on and talking about it. Karen Pei. Thank you. And thank you for watching The Street.